Hello my friends, this is Christian here. Today I will show you how you can play against the C4 English opening from White. And of course I have another secret system for you, which is played not very often in the online database. And now I will show you how this goes. At first we start with C4 and I recommend E5. And now here comes the G3 from white. It is the second move of the English opening and also the most played move here. In my system we are playing the C6. And now white has a few choices. For example, pawn to D4, which is already the main move here. And the second one, the natural move, bishop to G2. And in this video I will show you how you can handle these two moves. Okay, let's start with the move pawn to d4. And whenever your opponent plays here pawn to d4, you have to play e4 because you want to block this long diagonal for the white square bishop. So the main move here is pawn to d5 for white. And now there are two ways to play. At first I will show you a funny one for example for blitz game. And this starts with the bishop to b4 with a check. And the most of your opponent will continue with bishop to d2. And now here's a tricky move with pawn to e3. And if your opponent takes the bishop now, here comes the threat. E takes f2 with check. The king forcefully has to capture this pawn. And here comes queen to b6 with a check. The king has to move to this ugly g2 square and you simply capture the bishop. And this is really hard to play this for the white one and that is not very funny. But there is one thing. Your opponent don't has to capture your bishop. Instead he can capture with the f pawn, capture the e3 and now you can play queen e7 and get pressure on the e3 pawn in the game. And if your opponent plays very correctly here it is hard to get an advantage with the black pieces now. And that's the reason why I will show you a little bit better system now which I prefer in a longer game. After this pawn push from d4 to d5, I have another good choice for you to play and this is a little bit more common for the black one. It starts with the move pawn to f5, gaining space on the king side and also protecting the pawn on e4. So both players are develop his pieces for example knight to c3 and now remember if the knight is on c3 in my system you can always pin this with the bishop to b4 you can play a move like uh, bishop to e7 but it is not so aggressive like the bishop on b4 and your opponent plays for example bishop to d2 go out of this pin we develop our knight to f6 your opponent is also developed, for example, bishop to g2. And now here comes a very important move. c takes d5 and, for example, c takes d5. And then your opponent has one isolated pawn in the middle of the board. And this will be a big weakness for white. We're just castling on the king side and white will perhaps play this natural move queen to be free attacking the bishop and also facing the king here and this looks a little bit dangerous but it isn't because we're simply protecting the bishop with a5 and if he tries to attack this bishop with a3 we're simply retreating the bishop to the c5 square and if he tries another attack against uh, our bishop with the move knight to a4, we're simply protecting with the d-pawn. 
on this d pawn on d6 is a key move in our system and then also in other systems in the king's english variation so keep that in mind and for example if he takes the bishop on c5 we're taking back with the c pawn and then another natural move rook to c1 attacking this pawn here on c5 and we're simply protecting with the move b6 and now if you look at the position this pawn is isolated in the middle of the board and we're playing our next move with white and that is a developed move for for example a pawn to e3 to go out with his knight here on e2 and this is too slow for white because we're playing a4 the queen has to retreat for example to the c2 square and now we can simply capture this pawn in the middle of the board and we have a winning position for black now i will show you my own game and my opponent here was playing queen to c4 and is uh, threatening this knight because he is pinned and but i simply play here bishop to e6 and facing the queen now and now the it was better to retreat the queen to c2 for example or to e2 square but um, my opponent don't realize how dangerous this is now and so he played the move queen to b5 attacking the pawn on the b6 but i simply defended with the queen here on d6 and now my opponent make the big mistake to develop his pieces knight to e2 because after the move knight to c7 this queen is a gun you cannot retreat the queen to a safe square and this was already winning for black now let's have a look if white plays at the third move bishop to g2 this is a very natural move here and you should respond with the move d5 and now white has not many choices instead to take with the c pawn c takes d5 and you have to recapture with the c pawn and now if you look now at the board you have two center pawns to controlling the middle of the board and let's have a look how white is doing at the next move from white he wants to gaining space here with the move d4 and what are we doing we're going to e4 and block this long diagonal for the white square bishop that is uh, also a main plan of this system okay we'll just develop our pieces White plays the move knight to c3 and black you remember yes we are pinning the knight on c3 that was that what i'm saying if always the white was playing knight to c3 you can pin it with the bishop on b4 that will already be a good move here and a possible move and the most players are defending this and now we are just developing knight to the c6 square and white plays a uh, developing move the pawn to e3 to develop his knight to e2 for example and what are we doing we are just developing your knight to f6 and knight to e2 nothing special here and uh, now we have to look at a position and to decide uh, what we're playing now and it is possible to play the bishop here that is okay but we have a little better move and that is in this position for example castling or the second move is to play pawn to h5 that will be also a very good move but at first i will show you a funny game of me 
and here I was castling on the king side and my opponent was castling on the king side too. Now we are developing bishop to e6. This is uh, a good square for the bishop. And whenever your opponent plays a move like this, knight to f4, that is what my opponent was playing, you can simply play bishop to g4 and attacking the queen because the bishop is protected by this knight. And your opponent has to go out of the way with the queen. And for example, he goes to the square b3 and wants to uh, get uh, a counterattack here. And the thing is, in this position, he is uh, three times on the d pawn. One, two, three times. And we're just defending two times. One, two. So we have to remove a uh, attacker of the, from this pawn. And that is, for example, the knight on c3. So we has to forcefully capture this knight. And he was captured back with the bishop here. And now this is a special move if whenever you were castling on the king's side you should remember that this is a good move in my system. And the move is here, yes, pawn to g5. Looks a little bit risky, but in this system it isn't really. So I will show you how the game continues. Knight goes back to the h3 square. And we're just attacking with our bishop. Bishop on e2 attacking the rook. The rook goes to e1. And the bishop makes a long travel. Now the bishop goes for an attack at the queen. Bishop to c4 attacking the queen here. And here is a very, very funny trap. Uh, the better move now is retreating the queen to the uh, d1 square. But if he is an aggressive player and he thinks, uh, yes, I will capture this pawn here, that will be a big mistake. So he was losing, he's losing the queen immediately. I will show you that. Now we're playing queen to d6 and blocking the rest of the squares which the white queen has. For example, he plays a move like b3, that is the best move uh, which the computer pr prefers. And we're running out of this attack with the move bishop to d3. And he retreats this bishop here because the queen cannot be uh, saved now. We are playing now this tricky move knight to a5 and this queen is trapped. Yes, this is just winning. The only thing white can do is to play the bishop on e3, a counter attack uh, on the queen. But it doesn't matter because uh, if we are taking the queen and he's taking our queen and we're taking this bishop and we are a piece up and this is completely winning for black. So that was the funny one I, will I want to show you and now I want to show you another variation, how you can play against this. Okay, now I will show you another game. If my opponent tries the move bishop to g2, the natural move here. And it is uh, at the first time the same story here. We play d5, c takes d5, c takes d5. And also this is the best move here to play d4 and gaining space and getting out this black square bishop. And we're just playing e4, blocking this diagonal for the white square bishop now. And now just a few developing moves, knight to c3. And uh, what I'm saying before, yes, if the knight is on c3, we can play the push bishop to b4 and pin this knight. This is already a good move. And for example, he plays the bishop to d2 and goes out of this pin. We're just developing with the knight to the c6. And for example, he wanna, wants to attack our bishop on b4. Um, if we have this wonderful c5 square like in the games before, perhaps, 
and you can retreat to this square and defend then with the d6 pawn. But here this c5 square is blocked here. So you have to we have to forcefully capture this knight to capture back with the bishop. And now we'll just develop the knight on 2f6. And he plays the move e3, which is not uh, already the best move in this position, but one of the most natural moves to develop here the knight to the e2 square. Okay, and now this is a very special move in the system and not so risky as it seems. And this is pawn to h5. And now we have a threat. And the threat is to running to h4 and to attack the g-pawn and open the h-file and going for a deathly king's attack. Okay, but in this game my opponent don't ignore this threat and is playing h4 and don't allowing h4 by myself. But if he plays this move, he allows me another move now. And this is the bishop to g4 with some tempo attacking the queen here. And the most of the players are playing queen to b3 now because they're attacking here the b7 pawn. But it can be defended very easily by queen to d7 defending the b7 pawn. And now my opponent is developing his knight and he cannot develop to the e2 because we are just uh, taking with the bishop and he's losing the castle right. So he's going to develop the knight on the h3 square. And now we are just castling now. Looks a little bit strange because first we are running with the h pawn and then we are castle. But this is a little bit uh, tactical and most of the club players uh, don't realize this chance um, first running for an attack on the uh, h file on the open file and if your opponent blocks this you can simply castle here and the king is safe now but many club players are thinking oh this file is open but it isn't immediately. You have to look at the position. That is very important. Only by the way. Okay. Then. Perhaps my opponent plays uh, knight to the f4. Getting the knight into the game. And here in this position we have another tactical maneuver. You have to remember this for very much of your games. And the natural moves are here one of the rooks placing on the c8 uh, square and uh, gaining control of this uh, c file but this isn't not the best move because the best move is in, th in such a position to placing the knight on the right square because this knight on c6 at the moment it's doing nothing yeah because can't jump here can't attack here something and here is it blocked and here attacked by the bishop this is a stupid knight here so first i would prefer to improve the position of this knight and that's the reason by the next move knight to the d8 and my opponent plays a natural move and rook to c1 and now we are placing the knight on a very nice square knight to the e6 and if for example my opponent were castle we are just taking the knight and he has to take back and with this uh, taking on the uh, on the f4 my opponent has here an isolated pawn and that's the next uh, weakness in his camp that is not really good Okay, if we have such a position, um, perhaps we can uh, change the bishops. And <laughs> white don't want to allow this, but uh, he want to just connecting the rooks because he can't do anything against this change. Bishop takes here on g2, king takes on g2. 
And now we're just placing one of the rooks into the C file. It's very easy to play here for black because we have this strong square here on C4 and we are better in this game. So the next uh, natural move here for white is to move uh, rook to C1. And there are two moves. We can play rook immediately to C5. That will be also a very good move. But you can also play a, a more creative move like the pawn to b5. And that's what I'm doing here. Pawn to b5 because this square will be more stronger than before. That is okay. So for example, bishop retreats, wanna open the rooks. And we're jumping to our very common square, the c4. Now, after this rook to c4, black has a huge advantage for the rest of the game. This is uh, the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed this and you found something new to improve your chess or your tactic skills. And um, if you like, you can post the video, like, subscribe or comment it. Thank you for watching.